Okay, continuing on with domain 5.4, now let's go over something called due diligence and due care. So the process of systematically reviewing and assessing the compliance of an organization's operations, ensuring that legal and regulatory standards are met continuously. So some key points. This is proactive assessment. So this involves regularly reviewing and updating policies to align with changing laws and industry standards. So this is pretty much saying that, are we keeping up with our compliance? Are we actively doing it? Not kind of being reactive, but proactive. Attestation and acknowledgement. So these are processes where individuals or organizations confirm and acknowledge their understanding of and adherence to compliance requirements. So we have formal verification. Use of attestations as formal verification of compliance by employees, management, and third parties. This gives us responsibility and accountability. So this is encouraging a culture where every stakeholder understands and accepts their role in maintaining compliance. Because again, you're not the only department that the organization is going to have to worry about being compliant. There may be sales, accounting, marketing teams that, guess what? They're very aware of the GDPR as well. Legal and audit trails. So providing evidence during audits or legal proceedings to demonstrate proactive compliance efforts. Some other monitoring, external and external. So this is a continuous process of ensuring compliance within the organization and meeting expectations of external regulators and stakeholders. So kind of, again, uh, I guess, you know, Security Plus, 7Y0701, wants to kind of hit home the difference between internal and external, okay? So internal audits, those are regular internal reviews within the team, within the organization. And then we also have engagement with the external auditors, something I've talked about previously, like getting ISO certified or doing your SOC 2 audits. We can also automate this process. So this is the use of technology to automate compliance monitoring tasks, ensuring efficiency, accuracy, and consistency in compliance processes. So this could be something like uh, kind of having a subscription-based service that integrates into our dashboards and our SIME system that says, hey, uh, here's the current laws and regulations. Here's the current compliance standards we may have to be adhering to. And then with that, there is some cybersecurity solutions that offer compliance, right? That say, hey, if you use our system to configure it properly, we can be compliant. One thing that pops out to my head, in front of my mind, is becoming state compliant using something like SCAP, an automation tool that allows you to automatically, using local GPOs and using SCAP technologies to harden like a Windows 10 machine, right? So we have tools like SCAP. Legal implications. So the aspect of compliance that deals with the lawful handling of personal data, respecting the privacy rights of individuals, and adhering to protection, data protection laws. So again, we just have to think of our data sovereignty laws, right? We have to think about the local, regional, national, and global compliance for our organization. I am going to keep repeating this because it's very important. Again, if we're operating in countries that are part of the EU, GDPR. If we're operating in California, I, off the top of my head, I don't know, I can't remember what the law is, but they have their own state laws that does data privacy protection for consumers. So just something we have to think about and what are those legal implications if we're found to not be compliant? Part of this process of becoming compliant is monitoring that. If we see we have users popping up in Asia or in Europe, well, guess what? Now all of a sudden, it's up to us as a cyber team to address this and say, hey, we've seen an influx of users in the EU. It's probably time that we start involving GDPR compliance into our day-to-day -day operations as a business, especially if we like run e-commerce that's front-facing, right? Okay, now we're going to talk about the data subject, controller, and processor. So the classification, this is the classification of entities involved in data handling and processing, each with specific rights and responsibilities under privacy laws. So some key points, the data subject rights. This is recognizing and upholding the rights of individuals whose data is being processed. We have the data controller and its responsibilities. Ensuring data controllers determine the purposes and means of processing personal data in compliance with privacy laws. So a data controller for like my company, Trepa Tech, would be a third party called Stripe that handles all of our credit card transactions. And then we have data processors. So this is ensuring data processors handle data solely based on the controller's instructions and in compliance with legal requirements. Switch that up, right? Stripe would actually be the data processor in that 
scenario, right? That's my third party I send to do and be PCI compliant. Okay, privacy. We're gonna go over ownership, data inventory, and retention. So we wanna make sure that we have clear ownership and accountability. So defining ownership and ensuring accountability for data management and protection, that's something as an organization we're gonna do. Comprehensive data inventory. So part of having uh, good compliance and monitoring and assuring privacy is to make sure we know what data assets we have. This includes the locations, either like the logical locations, oh, it sits on this NAS or SAN server, or it could be geographical. Also make sure that we have proper access controls. Then we have retention policies. So this is developing and enforcing data retention policies that either are in line with the organizational standards or with certain legal requirements that maybe uh, you have to comply with, depending on what industry you're in and your data sovereignty laws. The right to be forgotten. So this is a data privacy law that's very prevalent in the GDPR. This is the principle that allows individuals to request the deletion of their personal data from an organization's records under certain conditions. So some key points, legal compliance, understanding and complying with legal obligations related to data erasure requests, process and verification, establishing a clear process for handling erasure requests, including identity verification and assessment of the request validity. And then of course we wanna ensure we're doing the data removal and we have confirmation of it. Okay, let's go ahead and do our quiz guys. Okay, question one. What distinguishes internal compliance monitoring from external compliance monitoring? So we're gonna go with C here. Internal compliance monitoring involves checking adherence to internal policies and procedures, while external monitoring involves verifying compliance with legal, regulatory, or contractual obligations. Question two. Why is understanding global privacy and legal implications crucial for organizations? So that's going to be to ensure that the organization's practices align with international privacy laws and regulations, if we have international business, and avoiding legal penalties and reputational data. Question three. What is the purpose of attestation, attestation, always mess that up, and acknowledgement in the context of security compliance? This is going to be A, to provide a mechanism for individuals to confirm their understanding and acceptance of compliance policies and procedures. Question four, why is due diligence slash care considered a fundamental aspect of effective security compliance? We're going to go with C, because it involves taking the necessary steps to understand and mitigate risk ensuring that the organization's operations are legally and ethically sound, protecting ourselves, right? Question five, what is the significance of the right to be forgotten in the context of data privacy? So it's gonna force or obliges organizations to erase personal data upon request of the data subject under certain conditions, i.e. you're a consumer, right? Like the GDPR, there's a huge thing that if you live in a country participating in the EU, that you have a right to erase your data. So this enhances individual privacy and control over what companies can do with your personal data. All right, guys, got another 100%. Now let's go ahead and move on to Domain 5.5. I'll see you there.